Okay, so here it is, Harley Benton LC Custom 3 Active. And uh, as you might have noticed, we are talking about a very important product. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, this is a star. Uh, what it means basically is that this guitar has been used for uh, the picks you can see on Harley Benton and Tommen's website. And there's something I have already noticed about this guitar. The shape of the neck is a bit different from what I had on the SC Custom 3 Passive. And I would not be surprised if this guitar was indeed a final prototype. Uh, why am I saying this? Uh, well, the, the neck still has a C shape, but it's a rounder C shape, less modern uh, than what I had on the SC Custom 3 Passive. And, well, I know Harley Benton have been following this brand for several years now. Uh, I remember about the Harley Benton EX84 Modern when it was released. It was pretty much supposed to be a tribute series for James Hetfield, uh, ESP, uh, Eat Fuck, uh, with a banana headstock, you know. And it was supposed to have a color that was very close to um, James Hetfield's ESP back then. So it was uh, a vintage white, you know, something very close to uh, a yellow. Eventually, the pics you had on the website were with this color, with this vintage white color, but when you ordered one of these Harley Benton EX84 models, you were receiving a guitar with the exact same color as this one, that's a regular white. Reason is, the pics that had been made when the Harley Benton EX84 was released were coming from a prototype. And if you go much closer from this, uh, just take a look at the Harley Benton SC Custom 3 Passive in purple color. You can see that some of the pictures show a chrome hardware, when some other pictures show a black chrome hardware, it almost looks black on the pics. So it means at some point people from Harley Benton have changed their mind as far as the color of the hardware goes. There was a prototype with a chrome hardware and eventually now uh, the real guitar is released with black chrome hardware. Okay, so I think this might be a final prototype. So anyway, I'm gonna make a review as usual and uh, I'll start with the frets that are absolutely nice, nothing sharp. The filing has been nicely done as well. I expect the finish to be absolutely perfect. This is a photo model. Uh, and to be honest, I have already taken a close look at this guitar and it looks like, yes, the finish is perfect, but there's something I have noticed about this knot. Uh, first, it's an ABS plastic knot, okay? And uh, maybe you see it, but it has not been cut very nicely, you know? it's comes out from the from the neck so I have to be careful playing because might be oh not that much to be honest but okay that might be uh, the only problem I have seen on this guitar so far um, I have uh, set it in tune so I can play it for you unplugged let's see how it sounds like this Sounds good, really sounds good. Okay, uh, so, well, I think um, the presentations are made. This guitar looks nice. I just regret you have that uh, creamy binding that surrounds the guitar. Uh, I think we could live without it. Or maybe it would look better if it had a black uh, binding, just like on my uh, Kramer Assault, for instance. I think it would look better, but anyway, uh, guitar looks pretty nice, feels pretty nice, feels a bit heavy, but uh, yeah, it's heavier than the C Custom 3 Passive for sure. I have to measure its exact weight, but okay, uh, now we're gonna listen to this guitar, uh, but just before we go there, I would like to ask you to subscribe to this channel if it's not already done, leave thumbs up under my videos, share on socials and so on, so more people come to visit the channel, and if you order anything from my partner to man, this guitar, and you will not have a VIP model, but normal uh, model, or another thing, or pretty much everything you want, uh, please use my partner link that's gonna be in the video description down below. 
you have to know that when you click my link, uh, you are on the German page of Toman. So if you're like me, you don't speak German, you click on the German flag, you choose yours, you click save, and there you are. Now, if you want to make 100% sure that you're already on my partner page and nowhere else, you can use the second link that's in the video description. It's going to lead you to a list of highly recommended gear, recommended by me, of course. There you will see my banner, my logo, everything that identifies the channel, so you're sure you're making no mistake. Okay, uh, really, I cannot wait to listen to how the speakup sounds, so let's stop talking, let's start playing. Okay, so we are back with this guitar. I have changed the strings for my usual, uh, the Dio EXL 140, uh, so that's a 10 to 52 string gauge. I am tuned in uh, drop D. Uh, what you see here is the red light from my PRS MT15. It means I am on the lead channel of my amp. So I'm gonna start with some high gain tones. And um, to boost the signal, I'm using my Harley Benton uh, Dr. D of a drive pedal. Uh, let's hear how this guitar sounds. Let's go. Well. Well, well, well. Wow, that powerful pickups. I mean, yeah, uh, those pickups have bite, aggression, a really very good note definition. And uh, I mean, we're talking about active pickups. I don't sense a lot of compression. There's a lot of headroom coming from 
a de escritor. <música> Yeah! It really sounds amazing good! I mean, wow! Those Tesla pickups are really surprisingly great! The chugs are really resonant! Wow! Uh, let's try the articulation anyway. I am impressed. It sounds like there's no weakness in those almost unknown uh, Tesla active pickups. They could give lessons to some EMG or uh, maybe some Simmer Duncan. I don't know about Fishman Fluence, I have not played them enough, but great, great pickups so far. Okay, uh, let's see how they sound in clean. Okay, so as you can see from the blue light here, I am on the clean channel on my Pure SMT15. Uh, that's just the first attempt, because I'm pretty sure it's gonna crunch, because we are talking about active pickups and well, obviously they have power, uh, but let's try it. Oh, sorry, forgot to cut the knowledge gate off. Yeah. That's what I thought would happen. Uh, we are having a lot of crunch. So I'm gonna move to my uh, Two Notes Audio uh, Le Clean uh, preamp pedal. Because on this preamp pedal I can set um, the level of gain. And uh, I think the yeah my setup should uh, avoid crunching. Okay, it doesn't crunch anymore, but it's really very bright. A lot of... Yeah, a lot of stuff in. Let's roll the tone off a tiny bit to see what we get. Oh, better. Yeah. Way better now.
really not bad at all if you consider we're talking about active pickups and in general active pickups are not really very interesting uh, when you play on a clean channel but with the tone rolled off or uh, something like quarter you've got something really nice I think Interesting, really. Uh, so far, the pickups show really no weakness. Uh, let's move to the uh, middle position to see what we get. Nice. Bridge position. Even the bridge position is interesting, I think. I'm really surprised with how good the clean tone is once you have rolled the tone off by a quarter or a third, something like that. Very impressive pickup so far. Okay, uh, let's try some lead tones now. And we are back on the lead channel, my PRS MT15, and this time I'm using my mower hustle drive to boost the signal. Let's hear how it sounds. You're not out of brightness at all. I think this kind of tune should be as true any mix. Pretty easy, they must say. access to the 24 fret is okay on the I, he, B, G and D but starts being complicated on the A and uh, really very complicated on the low E but 
Ah, is that okay? Very, very nice. Let's try the neck pickup. brightness again and what it takes to be a sweaty mix let's roll the tone off just out of curiosity Great. Really, um, so far, I'm really surprised with how good the pickups are. I never thought those really unknown to select these pickups would be that good. Uh, okay, uh, now what I'm going to do uh, is compare this SC Custom 3 Active with this SC Custom 2 Active. So that's going to be the Tesla Active pickups versus the Roswell Active pickups. And uh, what I'm going to do is just play two uh, different riffs. One on high gain on the bridge pickup of each guitar. A second on the clean channel with the neck pickup of each guitar. Uh, side by side so you can really uh, see uh, how they sound. And uh, make yourself an idea if those Tesla pickups are an improvement. If you compare them with the Roswell, the Roswell active pickups uh, from the second generation of Harley Benton's SC Custom. Here we go. Thank you. 
Okay, so as you have heard, there's a real difference of tone between those Tesla Active Pickups and the Roswell Active Pickups of the SC Custom 2 Active. Uh, as far as the metal rhythm goes, I really think these ones are better because they are fuller. Uh, they really have a lot of low end so for the chugs and this kind of things. Uh, it's much better and since they don't have that much high end, it's easier to play through the mix. Even though these ones are not bad, but something like, uh, yeah, maybe a bit too bright if you want to really pierce through the mix. Now for the cleans, I would give the advantage uh, to the Roswell, especially because of the low end that's more present. But uh, this one is not doing a bad job at all, considering we are talking about active pickups. And since we're talking about those pickups, I've got another very good news for you guys. If you want to buy this guitar, but you don't want to hear about the Tesla pickups. Well, as you can see, You've got a 3-pin connector system just like you would have on EMG Active Pickups or on Simu Duncan Active Pickups. So, you want to replace the pickups, you just remove them, you install your EMGs or your Simu Duncan and there you are. As far as I'm concerned really, I'm gonna keep this guitar and I'm gonna keep those pickups. I gotta say, I was not intending on <laughs> keeping a Harley Benton SC Custom 3 at any moment before I play this one. I just wanted to discover what they were bringing but I was satisfied with my SC Custom 2 and uh, I had in mind that I had to change the pickups of my SC Custom 2 Active anyway uh, but uh, I'm gonna keep this one and I'm not sure I'm gonna change the pickups but since you have this 3-pin connector system what I'm gonna do next uh, is compare the tone of those Tesla Active pickups with uh, I think I'm gonna go for a set of EMG 8160 very classic I think I'm also going to go for an EMG uh, Hot 70 set because that's the set you will find if you buy a Harley Benton SC Custom Plus. And I'm also going to compare them with some Simu Duncan AHB1 Active because, uh, well, I've got them at home and uh, it's going to change a little bit from EMGs, you know. Okay, uh, now time to talk about the playability of this axe. Uh, first to tell you, it's 3.9 kilograms. So, it's on the heavy side. Uh, the ST Custom 3 Passive was 3.3, so I think the entire range should stand between 3.3 3.9. Uh, go watch other people's videos, ask them how much it weighs, and you're gonna make yourself an idea, because I know that some people, if you're playing gigs, I mean, you don't want your guitar to be too heavy. And uh, I mean, for playing just one demo, uh, even if I have to do several takes, uh, keeping this guitar on my shoulder, uh, 3.3, one, nine kilograms is no problem. Uh, if I had to stay on stage for three hours, uh, maybe it would. Uh, anyway, this guitar is perfectly well balanced, super comfortable to play sitting or standing. Um, you've got a classic uh, tunematic tailpiece, so put in your palm, okay, made really easy. The grip on the pot is pretty good, I gotta say. Of course, you don't have a speed function. If you pull this thing off, uh, well, the button is gonna come. Okay, <laughs> that's just it. Uh, but yeah, the grip, uh, very interesting. Um, the frets are gliding very well, but not better than if it was classic frets. Uh, they're stainless steel, but yeah, it's okay. Uh, the neck, I really have to, to mention it. When I was playing the live parts and even the demos, it was really very hot out there and inside there. I mean, it was like 26 degrees, something like that, because of the light I'm using. Uh, my palms were really wet, and at no moment my hands were sticked on uh, this neck. So even though it's not a static neck, it is super comfortable uh, to play with some uh, palms that are wet. The tuning stability is satisfying, despite uh, this nut has not been cut uh, to be lined uh, to the neck of the guitar. Uh, I don't know if you're gonna see it, but uh, yeah, really I've mentioned it already, but uh, anyway, I'm gonna change this nut because it's an ABS plastic nut. Don't be lured with uh, the description that has been updated. I think it has been updated for the upcoming models, uh, but the first ones have a plastic nut. But the tuning stability is really interesting because I can play for one hour and a half, two hours, uh, playing chugs, uh, playing leads, making bands, this kind of things. And it doesn't, it barely moves a tiny bit, you know, just like any guitar would. And uh, I don't really realize with my ears that it has moved. I have to plug my, uh, my guitar tuner and realize that yes, it has moved a tiny bit, but 
really nothing bad and uh, nothing worse than what I have on some Schecter's or LTDs for instance, you know. So really, for the price, again, I have to talk about the price. It's 318 euros. This thing is a beast. I love the tone of those active pickups for the reason, but it also does a very good job for the leads because it's bursting through the mix much easier than I thought they would, to be honest. And uh, yeah, when I see this axe, I'm wondering what's left for an LTD EC401 that would also come with Gravituners, uh, that would have a graphite nut indeed, that would come with EMG8160, does exist in black and white, but uh, much better finishes are also available for the LTD. Uh, but if I take an EC401 in white, for instance, and I do compare with this one, I really wonder how much better the LTD could be. Uh, maybe a tiny bit, but not that much. Now the LTD is 777 euros when this one is 318 euros. If I can get my hands on an LTD C41, I will make a comparison. But uh, yeah, it's indecent to make such a good guitar for such an affordable price. And again, I had no idea when I haven't boxed it that it would be a keeper, but it definitely is. I am totally unable to let such a good guitar go back from my home. If you try one and uh, if you enjoy uh, the kind of tone it delivers, uh, I'm pretty sure it will be a keeper for you as well. Uh, yeah, it's just a tiny word about uh, this three-way uh, selector. It's doing a good job. It's not moving in a bad direction, okay. Uh, yeah, okay, so I think I said it all this time. Uh, so thanks for watching this video and see you very soon with this axe again for a pickup comparison.